god, he's standing in front of a green screen in the kitchen again. Yes, we're talking about an old video game. Have you ever been in a back storage room at work or ran to the garage to grab something and your eyes get absolutely assaulted with so many items that you forget what you even came down for in the first place? It makes you really have to lock in and find it. Most of the time with the stuff being actually out of reach. The devs down at Big Fish Games took this feeling and said, hey, why don't we turn this into a four to six hour point and click adventure puzzle game with multiple scenes and characters to see and a constant countdown clock in the top right corner to really invoke that sense of unease. And just like that, the Mystery Case Files games were born. I'm sure there's a lot more details to that, but I'm here to talk to you about one of their games and not the whole company, okay? Gosh. But if you'd like to see a video of me going over Big Fish Games and the company as a whole, please let me know down in the comments. Thank you. The Mystery Case Files franchise was a series of hidden objects games released by Big Fish Games in 2005 and seems to still be releasing games to this day. You take on the role of a master detective and are sent on cases by the Queen of England to unravel mysteries wherever they may be found. The gameplay loop of these titles require you to find a certain amount of hidden random objects in a painted scene, typically to uncover an item that you need to progress the story. Different puzzles are laid out in the games to break up the pacing a bit, and the story is continually being told to keep you engaged. To be completely frank with you, I'm only personally familiar with Prime Suspects and a few of the Ravenhurst games, so I can't speak much on the series as a whole, but I've definitely enjoyed the ones that I have played. With the basics lined out for the people who are completely unaware of the genre, let's take a look into Ravenhurst. But first, a quick word from today's spawn- Okay, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Okay, Jesus, please don't click away. Just want to say thank you again for your continued support, truly. And if you enjoyed today's video, please leave a like and maybe subscribe if you'd like to see more from me. Uh, anything helps tremendously, so thank you again. And with that, let's jump into Mystery Case Files, Ravenhurst. Ravenhurst was released in 2006 and has a bit more of a darker tone, which is probably why six-year-old Justin thought this game was god-tier entertainment. The game opens up with the player walking up to a derelict manor in a few opening shots, and we read a letter sent from the Queen of England. The letter states that there is a remote manor located near Blackpool, Britain, that has around 16 doors locked in an extremely weird fashion. What's even weirder about it is a diary that the Queen got a hold of written by Emma Ravenhurst, an apparent resident of the manor. The diary contains only one page and you're tasked with investigating the manor and uncovering more pages of the diary to understand the mystery that has shrouded the manor for years. Jesus Christ, this menu is nostalgic. I used to sit here and just watch it for hours back in the day as a kid sometimes if I was bored. Anyway, the game opens up to the first page of the diary, written on August 24th, 1894, and we come to find out that Emma has recently moved to a boarding school in Blackpool, England from Iowa after graduating as a teacher, swearing that she would spread her wings after graduation. She has arranged an apprenticeship with the headmistress in exchange for household chores around the school, joking about being no help in the kitchen. Emma states that there is an annual autumn dance this Friday evening and an entry written on September 5th, 1894. We are then presented with the central hub of the game. Uh, blueprints of all the rooms are laid out on the ground, and here we can choose where we go throughout the manor. Once you click on a room, uh, you are whisked away to a scene straight out of Hoarders. On the right side of your screen is a scavenger hunt list with all the items you need to find in the scene uh, to progress the story. You can leave at any time out of these rooms and go to another room if you get stuck and typically don't have to find every single object in these rooms. There is actually a counter in the bottom right corner that tells you how many clues you need to find before you can recreate a diary entry. The parlor door seems to have a keyhole on this picture and once clicking on it you find the first puzzle door of the game. Uh, this is one of the many puzzle doors throughout the game, sometimes resembling a Rube Goldberg machine. One of those systems where you do one thing and a reaction happens and it keeps happening over and over. I'm sure you've seen it on like a TikTok of podcasters or uh, ASMR like kinetic sand squishing one, one or the other. Anyway, uh, this first door is pretty simple to get you familiar with everything and grants us access to the parlor. I'm not going to say too much about the rooms themselves because I'd just be repeating myself mainly, but I will point out the ones that are absolutely seared into my memory, and this is one of the first ones. After getting all 22 clues, we get a notification saying that the crime computer is ready. Now these diary entry jigsaws may seem easy, but I swear sometimes they were very rough to get started. After putting the puzzle together, we get the next diary piece written on September 10th, 1894, titled An Intriguing Man. 
Emma gushes about how relieving the autumn dance was for her homesick heart and felt right at home for the first time since she moved it to England. She writes about a man that she met at the dance by the name of Charles Dallamere, mentioning how exceptionally handsome he was. Ooh. They danced together most of the evening, and when they weren't dancing, they were in deep conversation with each other. She mentions that she must have made a decent impression, for his eyes did not take leave of mine. Emma truly seems to be happy for the first time since she's moved to England. We're back to the menu, and this time the servant's quarter is the one with the puzzle lock on it. After clicking around a bit, we burn the padlock off the door and get access in. 22 clues found, and the crime computer is ready for another entry. February 5th, 1895. Emma talks about the past few months of her life, consisting of teaching in the day and spending her evenings with Charles. On March 14th, 1895, she writes, After a delightful carriage ride this evening, Charles amazed me by dropping to one knee and producing the most beautiful engagement ring. This is the moment in life for which every young woman awaits, a wealthy, handsome man asking for her hand in marriage. As Charles knelt before me, his request hung in the air. I felt my breath catch. Oh, wow. God's cold feet, does you, Emma? Granted, that was a bit of a quick turnaround time, but it's the 1890s. Life expectancy was about, like, 46 for England at the time. Brother had his own timer going in the top right. After the diary entry, we have a bit more access around the house, with both the grounds and second floor being opened up to us now. We also have to find 30 clues for the next entry. The second floor guest room is our puzzle door this time, and after some slots and psychic readings, we get in. This room is also seared into my brain. After getting our clues, we get the next entries. March 16th, 1895, Indecision. Emma writes that she's been avoiding Charles the past few days while she mulls over her proposal, making sure to give it enough time to make the correct decision. March 17th, she decides to decline, stating how difficult a decision it was, yet she feels her adult life is just now starting. March 18th, she writes, The delay of my reply, coupled with the melancholy demeanor, must surely have wounded Charles this day. I've denied that which he has so graciously offered. The backyard is seared. The second floor music room is our puzzle door, having us play some notes to get entry. 38 clues later, and we have the next diary entry, April 3rd, 1895. Emma writes that Charles was extremely disappointed and struggles herself with multiple feelings regarding the situation, unsure if she made the right decision. April 5th, 1895, she writes that after two weeks of not seeing him, Charles made a surprise visit after school holding a bouquet of red roses and a quote, mischievous grin. She feels relieved seeing him respect and appreciate her decision and writes that he excitedly tells her about some land he purchased and the secure funding that he was granted to build a beautiful home. The basement surveillance room is the next puzzle door requiring us to feed a Venus flytrap to gain entry. Surveillance room seared. Seared. We have another 38 clues to find, uh, with most of the floors being open to us now. After being the best I Spy player known to man, we get the sixth entry, titled Tragedy. Emma writes on May 14, 1895, that a man named Frank had fallen to his death that morning off the topmost scaffolding of Charles's home. The town was in mourning over the situation. May 16, 1895, Emma writes that she accompanied Charles to the funeral for Frank and noticed how quiet and sullen Charles was during the proceedings. As Frank was being lowered, Charles leaned over to Emma and said, Perhaps I am a cursed man, meant to reside alone within my bedeviled manor. Master manipulator alert! Fellas, is it gay to use the death of one of your workers as a way to make your ex-girlfriend feel bad for rejecting you? Uh, no puzzle door this time, but 38 clues to find again and we get our next entry titled News From Home, written May 23rd, 1895. Emma has received news from her mother that she should return home as soon as reasonably possible due to her father becoming sick. She didn't write many details and Emma does her best to not become overwhelmed with the situation at hand. She says that she'll speak with the headmistress and Charles before she makes arrangements and mentions how frantic with concern she was for her father. She ends the entry by stating, It seems that unlucky events have been surrounding me as of late. Sadly enough, it's uh, just getting started for poor Emma. The library is a puzzle door this time and has you working with a bunch of clocks. After enough clicking and 45 clues, we get entry 8 titled, I Must Return Home, dated for May 24th, 1895. Emma writes that the headmistress was more than accommodating regarding her situation and even offered to pack her things. Charles, on the other hand, acted like a baby and nearly went on a tirade. He gathers himself and tries his hand at flattering her by naming his estate in her honor. 
She mentions that it seems like he's trying to secure her return to England, but can't think of those things at the moment. We have less clues to find this time, only needing 30 with no puzzle door, and once we get that, we get our next entry pretty quickly. Entry number 9 was written on June 1st, 1895, and is titled Unwell. Emma mentions that she had to retire shortly after dinner due to feeling unwell and chalks it up to the sum of sad goodbyes and the stress of having to leave England so abruptly. June 2nd, 1895, she writes that the ship she booked for herself had already left without her due to contracting a high fever and extreme fatigue, noting that she finds it difficult to even stand for short periods of time without intense vertigo. Charles had opened his newly built manor to Emma to stay until she's able to make the journey home. Some have to wonder if it's the safest bet for Emma. Uh, the attic is our next puzzle door, and for this one we have to sacrifice a firstborn. I'm just kidding. It's getting to the point where I can't really talk about the puzzle doors without fully explaining them or going into it. Uh, and this isn't a tutorial, so just watch this and tell me what you think. Anyway, uh, 45 clues later, we get entry number 10, written on June 10th, 1895, titled Unusual Behavior. Emma talks about how she's unable to get a proper diagnosis and has resorted to reading medical encyclopedias for anything regarding her symptoms, mentioning how she thankfully doesn't believe it to be yellow fever. Charles had been taking good care of her but has become very withdrawn staying up all hours of the night and staying confined in his workshop. Emma mentions that when she feels up to it, she enjoys exploring the manor and mentions how cluttered Charles has been letting the manor become. She says, he takes great pride in procuring an absolute hoard of varied non-essentials. Cute little wink to the player. Storage room is our next puzzle door, and here's the speed run for that. Forgot to mention it, uh, but the music room, seared. We get entry number 11, titled Doctor Visit, written on June 14th, 1895. Emma talks about how much weaker she gets with every passing day, and how she's now experiencing blackouts. She struggles with staying focused and struggles to maintain a constant temperature. June 15th, the local doctor arrives again and goes through the normal routine he has been doing since she's fallen ill. Exhausted with all the horse pills and gross concoctions she takes just to keep her symptoms at bay. Charles apparently is also growing weary of the burden of caring for her and suggests hiring a live in nurse maid to help. Oh, poor baby man, so tired after just two weeks. Shut the fuck up. We got 53 clues to find this time around, with the shed having a puzzle lock. Something to do with flies and electricity. Ooh, zap zap. I don't know. Next entry, please. Strange Behavior was written on June 21st, 1895, and talks about how even though Charles tends to her still, he will be away from the manor for long periods of time and return with extremely strange items. She mentions how the library above her room is a great example of the strange items, such as tomes discussing voodoo, witchcraft, and dark magic piled high enough to reach your waist. Emma states that she knows he loves books, but is understandably concerned with his choice of theme. 38 Clues is all that stands between us and entry number 13, Feverish Dream. Fever's Dream was written on July 13th, 1895 and follows Emma discussing how hard it's become for her to get some sleep. She states that nightmares have become a common issue and writes about the dream she had that night. She's sitting in her wheelchair when she looks down and sees a gown of white, lacy and made of satin, and realizes it to be a wedding dress. She sits frozen in the gown, paralyzed by the sight of it, stating that her fever is the cause of all of these dreams. Concern for her dad also continues to grow, not receiving any communication from home. Look at that, the seller has a puzzle on it. That's wild. Somebody should solve that. This one does what I've always called a chess puzzle, uh, which it might be called something different, but Nancy Games absolutely love these puzzles, so I thought that was pretty cool. Anyway, our next entry is titled Welcome Company and was written on July 14th, 1895. Emma excitedly writes about a new face to help aid her named Rose Somerset. She's a nurse that will be helping around the house and makes Emma very excited to have new company considering Charles stays extremely busy nowadays. Emma also writes that it's gotten to the point where she's completely confined to her wheelchair due to her condition. After gathering 45 clues, we get entry 15, The Dress, dated August 2nd, 1895. Emma gratefully writes about how much of a blessing Rose has been for her and notes that Rose also mentions how strange Charles has been acting. Rose quizzically asks Emma if Charles had ever been wed, and Emma explains that he hadn't and told Rose of his intentions towards Emma. A bit confused, 
She asks Rose what makes her question that, and Rose states that she found a wedding dress while cleaning the wardrobe upstairs. Emma asks Rose to bring her the dress and is horrified upon realizing it's the same dress from her nightmares. Emma is extremely confused and unsettled by learning this information. This is the master bathroom. This is in fact seared into my memory. The greenhouse has a puzzle door this time, requiring us to grow pretty little flowers. Look at the pretty little flowers, it's so pretty. I'm not gonna keep that, <laughs> I'm not gonna keep that. After getting all of our clues, we get the entry hidden correspondence dated August 3rd, 1895. Emma's condition is worsening to the point of affecting her vision and motor skills, mentioning that Rose has been helping her write her entries while she dictates. Emma writes that her and Rose's anxiety has done nothing but increase in regards to Charles and have agreed to hide the diary together. This is due to the fact that Charles has quietly constructed a full-size nursery with a crib and has left all of the letters sent from Emma's family inside of the crib. She writes, I am scared for my very life. Brother Man has gone absolutely feral over this rejection and is pretty hilarious. Terrifying but hilarious. 45 Clues grants us the next entry, which sheds a lot of light on Emma's situation. Entry 17 is titled Poison, written August 4th, 1895. Emma seems to be extremely desperate as she writes, barely able to muster the energy to do so. She says she's falling in and out of consciousness throughout the day and feels like now she knows why. Charles has gotten to the point where he only prepares Emma's dinners and stays hidden throughout the day. As Rose was cleaning the kitchen, she swears she saw him pocket a bottle labeled Phosphorus White. Rose thought it was for one of his contraptions at first, but then realized it to be a key ingredient in poison. Emma concludes the entry by simply asking, is Charles trying to poison me? We got 53 big ones to find this time around and the nursery is our puzzle door. Uh, this one is pretty interesting, requiring you to remember items to put into sequence. And it looks like each of the items are unique. So that's pretty challenging. Anyway, uh, the game room seared in here, right here. We're getting pretty close to the end of the game now here with entry 18. Uh, this one's written on August 5th, 1895, and is titled, We Must Flee. Emma wrestles with her extreme confusion, wondering if she can even trust herself at this point. Rose believes that Charles is keeping her sick to make her stay at the manor. Rose is willing to help her get out of the situation due to Charles falling into his own kind of madness. Emma's pain can be felt throughout the pages as she states how urgent it is for them to get out of there. Charles will kill us if we do not flee this place at once, Emma concludes. The guest quarters houses our last puzzle lock and it's one of those click-a-thons. 60 clues later and we get the penultimate entry titled Escape, written on August 6, 1895. Emma writes that they're getting the few belongings that she has together since Charles has left the manor for an unknown amount of time. Charles has become fully consumed by his madness, moving in erratic fashions and constantly mumbling to himself. Rose informs Emma that the contraptions on the doors are locks and Emma laments questioning his actions and ending the entry by asking why would he i said that the guest quarters was the final uh, puzzle lock and oh you get to see me crack for a minute i'm not going back and saying all of it again i messed up the script okay i'm sorry the workshop is our final puzzle door sporting a good old sliding puzzle and a lot more stuff okay we soon see that the workshop is the cleanest room in the manor interestingly enough the final entry is dated for uh today it's dated for today. It's titled My Only Hope and has Emma reaching out to us directly from the other side. Kind of a cracked postal system for the ghost world, I guess. I'm not really sure of the logistics of this. Emma informs us that she's been watching us put together the remnants of her diary and asks us a final favor of releasing her from this horrible place. She vaguely states that she was lost a long time ago, and we don't get much details in terms of what actually happened between her and Charles. Emma tells us that she's kept in the cellar and we must look beyond the brick and mortar. We are also told the last door requires seven skeleton keys hidden throughout the house. Emma ends the entry by saying, without your help, I can never go home. With multiple rooms open to us, we are tasked with finding the keys necessary to release Emma's ghost from the prison that is Ravenhurst Manor. The cellar has a skeleton door key and requires us to enter a code based off the keys. After spelling out revered, the doors slide open to reveal an upright coffin containing what we can only assume to be the remains of Emma Ravenhurst. 
Also, these candles have been burning for what I can only assume to be decades. Uh, so that's pretty cool. <laughs> Clicking on the coffin opens up to reveal a skeleton that gives us a little bit of a light show before fading from reality. The game winds down to a close on an end screen showing us another letter from the queen. She congratulates us on clearing up the mystery of Ravenhurst Manor and even bestows upon us the honor of allowing us membership into the Royal Secret Service. Emma's ghost continually states that she's free and a remodeled version of the mansion is shown in a photo in the bottom left. All is well now at the manor, but I can't help wonder if we may have released something other than Emma's ghost. Nah, probably not. We're all good. Anyway, uh, that is the lore of the first Ravenhurst title. I know that there are about five or six other Ravenhurst games, but I've never really checked them out besides like the fourth one. But I don't even think I finished that one because I was just completely out of the loop of the story at that point. Games like these that aren't incredibly high budget are very interesting to me, and I love to see what kind of story they went with back in the day, so I hope you enjoyed this little look back with me. Have you ever played any of the Ravenhurst games or any of the Mystery Case File games in general? If you have, please let me know down below. That will be all for me today, and I hope you enjoyed. Uh, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you found this interesting. I'm still streaming every once in a while here on YouTube now, uh, giving Twitch a bit of a break. So make sure to turn that bell on if you'd like to check me out live. Thank you guys truly so much for everything. I, I greatly appreciate all of it. So thank you. Bye-bye.